my son Zakaria, he is my oldest son, he's 10 years old now, alhamdulillah. And he goes to the Muslim Scouts, okay? And in the Muslim Scouts, they do this like Muslim Olympics. It's really cool, you have like 1,000 children there, 800 or 1,000 children in this auditorium and, and they're doing Olympic running and all the different type of sports. You know, I try to be a father when, when I can, when I want, when I try to be, yeah? You know, may Allah make me a good dad. And um, I wanted to give him advice. And I said to him, you know, Zakaria, it's not about winning. He was doing the 400 meter race. I said, it's not about winning, Zakaria. It's about being the best version of yourself, having a sense of ihsan. Because Allah has given you tools and gifts, you don't know what they are, but you know they're amazing and you want to use them to the best of your ability. And if you use them to the best of your ability, this is shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because ihsan is into shukr in my view. Because Allah has given you tools, use them excellently as best as possible, and this is a sign of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You could win Zakaria but you didn't do your best and you really failed. And you could lose and do your best and you were truly successful because you, you had ihsan. He went, Baba, that's deep. <laughs> so I was giving him this advice and he says, be yourself, just express yourself. It's not about winning or losing. I just want you to be the best that you can be. So it starts on your marks, get set. <laughs> it was phenomenal. He was going so fast. He was like, oh my God. Like he looked like, the, he was like in his own, you know, like a, you know when you have children as a father, you know when your child is like in that very rare moment, self-expressive, not caring what people think. In that age, they care a little about what mom thinks, dad thinks, other children think. But he was like in the moment, he was in a social spiritual vacuum. He was like, I was like so like, I was overwhelmed, yeah? <laughs> Sorry. And um, I had Ilyas, my other son on my shoulders and Lots of Asians, some continent, conservative lot there. And I'm the kind of guy that does, I don't care what people think now. I'm 36 years old, I don't give a damn. I got a glass on my shoulders, I'm wearing a Bruce Lee top, I got some crazy tracksuit, I'm more disheveled, I got wearing some crazy boots. I'm going through the middle of the Olympic Park going, Come on, Zakaria! Beautiful baby! I'm holding a moose, some uncle, beautiful baby! Running around, excellent Zakaria! Brilliant! Brilliant! I was in the moment, I was like, wow! He came second, alhamdulillah. When he stopped, he looked at me as if it was, you know, I found a part of myself that I haven't found before. These are very rare moments, right? And I'm thinking to myself, why, why did I react that way? Because I noticed an attribute in Zakaria that I believe deserved praise. I noticed something in Zakaria that I thought as a father deserves some praise. Now we do this all the time, don't we? When we hear great poetry of Iqbal, SubhanAllah, right? When we see our famous nasheed artists, we're like, wow, what a great nasheed. We give them a standing ovation, we clap, we applaud. We all the time praise people for their aptitude and their abilities. Mo Farah, the Olympic runner. Even when Mo Farah was doing the Olympics, I even stood up saying, come on Mo! And I was like, wow, what a brilliant runner. I like boxing, when I see great boxers, recently Anthony Joshua fought Klitschko, he got knocked down in the 6th round, he got back up, the tenacity, the sagacity, I was like, whoa, inspirational, right? We do this all the time, we give people a standing ovation, we praise, we clap, we say well done, because we notice attributes in people that deserve due praise, right? But look at this universe, look what we discussed for the past few days. We have the ability to have rational insights. We have consciousness. We have this amazing complexity. We have physical laws in the universe. If they were different, we wouldn't have life. We have this life sensitive arrangement of stars and celestial objects that if they were different, we wouldn't have conscious life on Earth. Look at Earth, we have plants that move with the sun. We have animals that could stand their weight many times over. Look what's happening on this planet. We have seeds that germinate because of the heat of forest fires. They only germinate from the heat of forest fires. We have birds that can fly for days at a time without truly sleeping. Because they have two parts of the brain. One sleeps, one's awake. And one, one part of the brain has, has had enough. It wakes up and the other part sleeps. I mean, just talk to the board. He gives me some amazing stories. 
about biology and what happens in this world, right? And yet some of us, we can't give Allah a standing ovation. We can't praise Him and glorify Him and say Allahu Akbar. I want you guys to realize that when you talk to human beings, go straight to that aspect of misdirected worship. You know, my father, he attended my school band. I used to play classical music, classical guitar when I was non-Muslim and go to the Royal School of Music. Not many people know this about me, right? And inevitably, I had to go to the school band. So my dad attended. And I wasn't very good at electric guitar, so I would put the volume well, way down and have another four guitarists. They would be making the noise. They would be like, look at me, I'm so cool, right? <laughs> and there was a moment where I think it was an a cappella singer. And she had an amazing voice. And she basically expressed herself, and it was the climatic part of the song. It was phenomenal. And you could see that, you know, she didn't care who was around, it was just her and her expression. My dad stood up and he was going, bravo, and he's kind of Greek accent, bravo, he was the only guy standing up. Because he noticed an attribute in her that deserved due praise, right? That self-expression, that amazing ability. We do this all the time, but look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people that we praise are deficient. They're just a rearrangement of carbon. They're limited to some degree. They're not perfect. They have flaws and deficiencies. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not flawed. He is perfect. He has no deficiency and no flaw. And some of us, we find it very difficult to give Him due praise.